Welcome to this lecture about aquifer thermal storage systems. In these systems, heat and cold from building are stored on a seasonal basis in the ground, by which in the end little energy is needed for both. It works only well when there is a heating season and a cooling season. The quantities of heat and cold stored in the ground must be balanced. Let's start with the summer situation in which cooling is needed for the building and just imagine we want to cool warm outdoor air from 35 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees. If we pump the cold water from the aquifer, we can easily transfer heat from the warm air to the aquifer water flowing through the heat exchanger. In this picture, I used aquifer water at 9 degrees, which is often the temperature in North Europe, but that would work as well if the aquifer was warmer, as long as its temperature is colder than the one of the outdoor air. So, the cold water from the aquifer is pumped and heated by the warm air up to 20 degrees in this example. This aquifer water at 20 degrees is then re-injected into the aquifer using a well placed far enough from the cold well, generally a few hundred meters. This pumping of the cold aquifer water is done all summer, resulting in a bubble of warm water at the cold well. I remind you that the water is somehow confined within the sand and circulates only very slowly between the packages of sand. As sand's thermal conductivity is not very high, the bubble of heat is able to remain for a few months. And then winter arrives where we need heat. The heat that has been stored in the warm well can then be used by just reversing the flows in the heat exchanger. Now, the warm water is pumped to the heat exchanger in which it gives its heat to the cold outdoor ventilation air in such a way that it is nicely preheated, for instance, from 5 degrees to 15 degrees. In our example, we used a cold well at 9 degrees and a warm well at 20 degrees. Other temperatures could be chosen depending on the desired temperature levels. It is even possible to store high temperatures above 40 degrees. This is not often allowed as this could, could change the chemical balance in the ground. In general, there are temperature limitations and for instance in the Netherlands it is forbidden to go above 25 degrees. It is also mandatory to make sure and demonstrate that there is a thermal balance in the ground, meaning that the quantity of heat extracted is the same as the quantity of heat supplied to the ground. A yearly balance must be carried out. Be aware that these systems in fact do not even use the heat from the ground. They just store cold and heat from the building and the outdoor air. And last but not least, an even better system is to use the warm aquifer water as a heat source for a heat pump. Because the heat source has now a very high temperature, the COP will be high too. Typical COPs for these systems in the Netherlands are around 6 to 8 and the EER also. Let's look at the PNID of such an 8S system and study all its working modes. The grey lines are not active. You recognize here all elements we saw in other PNIDs. The green lines are for the air. The air is handled in the air handling unit. It can be heated and cooled there. There is a heat pump connected to the cold well and to the warm well of the aquifer thermal storage below on the left. The rooms on the right are equipped with a hydronic heater and a separate hydronic cooler. Let's look at the first mode. This is the full load uh, heating and there is no cooling and there is a peak load. The outdoor temperature is around uh, minus 5 degrees Celsius. The heat from the warm well is used as source for the heat pump. The heat pump cannot provide all needed heat, so the boiler is needed. You see the connection to the boiler. The cold is loaded to the cold well and the heat is used in the air handling unit and for the floor heating. Let's look now at the second mode. It is medium heating, load, there is no cooling and the outdoor temperature is around 5 degrees Celsius. The heat from the warm well is used as source for the heat pump. The heat pump can provide all needed heat. The boiler is not in use. The cold is loaded to the cold well. And heat is used in the air handling unit and for the floor heating. We go now to the mid-season, where there is a bit of cooling 
needed. The outdoor temperature is around 7 degrees Celsius. There is no heating demand, but a bit of cooling. The dry air cooler delivers cold to the air handling unit. There is no cold or heat loaded in the wells. And the chiller, the heat pump in chiller mode, is not working either. It's just free cooling with a dry air cooler. Let's go further, what we call passive cooling. The outdoor temperature is now around 18 degrees Celsius. There is no heating demand, but the cooling demand is uh, uh, um, higher. The cold well of the aquifer delivers whole needed cold to the air handling unit and the floor system, so the chiller is not working. The heat is loaded to the warm well. Let's look now at full load cooling. The outdoor temperature will be around 25 degrees Celsius. The cold well of the aquifer delivers partly cold to the air handling unit and to the floor systems and to the evaporator of the heat pump for deeper cooling. The heat at the condenser side of the heat pump is wasted to the air. Alternatively, it can be inje injected into the warm well and there is heat loaded into the warm well. And we also have the mixed modes. In the mid-season, where there is heating and cooling, and heating is leading, meaning there is more heating needed than cooling. The outdoor temperature will be around 12 degrees Celsius. The heating demand is much larger than the cooling demand. The heat pump delivers heat to rooms 1 and 2, and cooling to room 3 through the condenser. Some cold may be loaded into the cold well, as you can see. Finally, we have the mid-season again, but this time the cooling is leading. The outdoor temperature will be typically around 12 degrees Celsius. The cooling demand is larger than the heating demand. You can imagine that this happens in a building where there is a high occupancy, a lot of students, for instance. The heat pump delivers heat to room 1 and cooling to room 2 and 3 through the condenser. And at the same time, some heat may be loaded in the warm well. We have now described all modes of ATAS system. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.